Hello everyone, how are you doing today? We are back again with a new video and uh, today we have a Dell laptop. This one is a Dell Inspiron 15-7566-1821. Uh, this is a 7000 series. It comes with an iCore 5, 6th generation 300HQ. It has a built-in in video chip. It's a GTX GeForce. 960M. So what are we gonna do right now? We want to open it up, do some cleanup, change the thermal paste and in the process I'm gonna show you guys how to replace the other components. And if you want to do your own maintenance for the laptop, you can just follow the easy steps. So let's get started. First thing first, you want to flip over the laptop. You want to remove the only screw which is on the bottom service cover. Once you remove it, Remember this screw that has a C-lock protection on it, so you won't be able to take it out, you just loosen it up. And I recommend you, you always keep a guitar pick around, it's really handy. I'm going to put it right underneath, and move it around, jiggle it around, and the cover should come out. This is the bottom cover, you can go ahead and clean up the dust filters right over here, these are mesh. All right, next down here, we have the RAM in the middle. There's only one stick RAM, the mechanical hard drive, and then there's an NVMe. I'm not sure if this is an NVMe or it's just a regular uh, SSD hard drive. I think it is an NVMe. I have to look at it. And then we have the Wi-Fi board right there, the CMOS battery, the laptop battery, the two fans, and the subwoofer, which is right under it. Alright, next step, you're gonna remove the mechanical hard drive. Before we remove the mechanical hard drive, you wanna start pulling out this plastic secure lock which holds the ribbon cable goes to the connector right there. To remove this lock, just simply lift up the black cover just about two millimeters towards the ceiling. And next, you can just go ahead and slide out the ribbon cable. Next step, you're gonna remove the four screws that hold the caddy, which is holding the hard drive. All right, next, you're just gonna go ahead and lift up the hard drive straight up. That's your hard drive, and there's a connector right in front. You can just pull out with your fingernails. There you go. And if you want to replace your hard drive, replace the caddy to the new hard drive and you are all set. Next, we're going to remove the SSD hard drive which is right over here by removing one screw. Once you remove the screw, the SSD drive stick will just lift out in 45 degree angle. In the same position, you're going to pull it out. Do not lift it anymore. If you lift it higher, you're going to break the SSD or you're going to break the jack. Most probably you break uh, jack I guess unless you want to try it out go ahead next we're gonna remove the Wi-Fi board by removing one screw so we can remove the bracket by the way there we have the bracket and same thing with the Wi-Fi board you're gonna lift up in 45 degree angle and you're gonna pull it out next you wanna just unhook the cables just pop them open next we're gonna remove the RAM just by sliding these two hinges apart. RAM comes in the same position, 45 degrees. And next, we're gonna remove the battery connector. Remove it. You can either remove it from the battery or you can remove it from the motherboard. So I'm gonna remove it from the motherboard. Unhook the battery cable, which is right under this lock. And then gently pull out the jack. You might wanna wiggle it around, so you wanna Pull out the straight forward. Once you did that, you want to grab your special screwdrivers and unscrew one, two, three, four, five screws. All right, once you remove the screws, just grab this plastic thing right here and just pull out. Now, there you have the battery. These are like a one, two, three cell polymer batteries. Right. And we also have to remove the bracket that holds the LCD cable right on the board by removing one screw right over there. 
Once you remove that, you want to grab this plastic thing right here. It goes to be just like that. And you just want to pull out straight up. Next, you want to loose up this. It has an adhesive tape right there. So just loosen up the cables. Also, remove this cable right here. I'm guessing this is for some webcam stuff. So you're going to pull this cable too. Next, we're going to loosen up the backlight cable and the trackpad by lifting up these hinges right here. Just stick it right there and lift up 90 degrees. Same thing for this one. 90 degree. Next, you want to just pull out the cables gently. Next, if you want to go ahead and remove the CMOS battery, if you remove the CMOS battery, just pull out. You're gonna reset the date and time on the BIOS. You have to configure that again. Next step is to remove the four screws that holds the heatsink cover or the back end cover. Once you remove these screws, remember that there is a like a one, two, three, four plastic grips right over here that they just clamp on the plastic. So you have to loosen those up. You have to lift them up. And while you're lifting up, you have to pull them out. You might want to do it in a position that is easier for you. I suggest I put a guitar pick right underneath. There you go. You can pull it from one side. And once you have halfway through, just go ahead from the other side, help it out. And this is the back rail for the cover. So, as you can see up here, we have the cables for Wi-Fi and we have the LCD cable running down this way. So we're going to remove the hinges by removing one screw at the by the fan right there by the heatsink and one on the other side. So we're going to remove these two ones are right there and we're going to remove these two right there. I'm hoping these ones will loosen up the screen. Probably. Probably not. I'm guessing there's the other screw that actually holds it. So I'm gonna remove the other screw. Let's try to remove this one. We eventually gonna remove everything, so let's go ahead. No. Let's see if I open the laptop lid, what happens? Oh, I see. We cannot still remove it, but there's one more. We have to remove the top cover, so let's do that. Let's start removing all the screws. You're going to remove every screw that you see on the bottom cover, including the ones on the corners. And do not remove the screws that hold the touchpad, which is right this one and that one over there. But do remove everything else, which is on the P sign, which is for panel. Double check, make sure you haven't missed any. Sometimes they're right under the cables. All right, everything looks fine. All the screws removed. So next, open up the screen in 45 degree angle. We are going to stick the guitar pick right on the between the top panel, right there, and on the bottom panel. And we're going to do the same thing all around it. Once you did the corners, don't yank it out because underneath you're going to open a 45 degree angle and you are going to see a flex cable which is for the keyboard and some on off switch button right there. So to remove the flex cable for the screen is the same thing, you have to lift up the cover 
in this case is the white one and slide down the case, slide out the cable and now the black cable for the on off switch button and remove that one all right now right as soon as we remove the top panel flip it over if you don't want to change the keyboard it's really a hassle because you have to melt or remove these melted plastic joints with a cutter or something because they don't have any screw unlike macbook pro keyboard they have actually 30 40 screws instead of melting plastic which after replacing the keyboard it's a mesh keyboard you have to put this metal bracket back on so it can hold the keyboard in place so after you put it back on you have to actually with a solder station you have to melt back some plastic over the joints otherwise it's not going to stick it all right down here in order to remove the screen there's one more screw that was holding it right there on the hinges we're going to remove these two screws now you can go ahead and lift up the screen Remember the cables at the bottom, you have to loosen up the cables. So this is your top screen LCD. Now down here on the left side we have the SD card reader and an extra USB port. And they are bridged over with a flex cable right there. So we're going to remove this flex cable by lifting up the jack and on the slide the cable. Remove it, two screws. It should come out pretty easy. So there you have your SD card reader and the USB. I'm not gonna go down in the detail with the speakers. If you want to replace the subwoofer right there, two, two screws right there, in front of the speakers right there, and the right one right there. They are connected with one cable all the way to this end. We're gonna remove this cable. Also, we're gonna remove this. I'm guessing a LED right here. Power on light, I guess. Just by not hooking this cable right there. The power jack. If you wanna replace the power jack, you have to remove four screws to that holds the metal cover right over. Once you remove the four screws. Lift up the cover, and now you can slide out the jack. I'm not gonna pull out, so I'm just gonna first lift up the motherboard. I suggest you first disconnect the fan cables from the board. These fan cables are really tiny, so I don't suggest you just yank on them. Instead of yanking on them, just put your fingernails between these gaps right here, and then pull out this is a safer way so that way you don't have to put any tension right on the cables same thing for the other end you're gonna do the same thing next we're gonna remove the screws that holds the motherboard which is one right there second one should be right at the other end okay we also have to remove the fan because the fan goes over the heat sink it's not gonna let it come out so we have to remove the fan, there's one, two, three screws on each fan, I guess. Alright, these fans are actually using the top chassis for housing. So yeah. These are kind of turbine fan. It goes over this ones right there. And I particularly don't like this heatsink. It's kind of really messed up that how they made this. They made a lot, lot of heatsink. And if you pay attention, the fan only blows through the bottom side of the heatsink. It will not blow through the second layer, not even on the top layer. So that means the only fan is just going through the less than a half of the heatsink. Same thing for the other end. So they put a low profile fan, which is not really helping at all. So. 
Um, if you pay attention, the fan only blows on the bottom segment, which is about half a centimeter, about half a centimeter exactly. And this one is way bigger, it's not doing anything, and the other one is not doing it. They are supposed to go through these fins, but it doesn't. It only goes through this one, and it comes out from the other side, not affecting lots of airflow. That's why uh, that's the other reason that it runs harder. Anyway. So to lift up the motherboard, just go ahead and gently from this end, lift up, wiggle it around, and it should come up. So this is the bottom chassis. The only thing that is left here is the speakers and the front LED. All right, this is the motherboard. We're gonna flip it over. First thing first on this motherboard, there's a power jack. So if you want to unhook the power jack, just go unhook it out. It has a one, two, three, three and three. So it has a three phase power cable. So it directs in the 19 volt or 20 volt to different places. So you want to stress the component. Down here we have the heat sink and the whole motherboard. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna remove the screws that holds the heat sink towards the motherboard. Here are about one, two, three, four, five, six screws. Alright. Next you just wanna push down the motherboard towards the table. Because the heat sink actually lift up the motherboard so that way. There we go. And these are thermal pads. People always ask me, do I need to change the thermal pads? Do I have to change the thermal pads? You do not need to touch these thermal pads. They are okay. Yeah, you do not need to buy new thermal pads for better quality. And not most all the laptops even have thermal pads or heatsink touching the VRAMs. So go with the stock thermal pads that they have here, unless you want to do overclock. If you do want to do any overclocking on the CPU or GPU, you are going to stress the components on the power control component, or if you want to go overclock your VRAMs, you are going to stress them out there, then you do need a thermal pads. But if you're going to use a stock voltage for non-overclocking, do not touch the thermal pads. What are we gonna do right now? We're just gonna clean up the CPU and the GPU right here. CPU, GPU. We're gonna clean up the heat sink. I'm gonna use some alcohol and some towel. Alright, now that we clean up the heat sink and we clean up the uh, CPU and GPU. I'm gonna show you guys a trick, very specific trick. This heatsink needs uh, enough pressures on the CPU and GPU to make a good contact. The better the pressure, the better heat transfer there will be. And these ones, they have uh, these flimsy legs right here. That's supposed to have some tension, so you're supposed to pull the heatsink towards the board, but they do not do a great job. So what I suggest you guys do is to bend them a little bit upward. So while you, when you put the screws in, so it will actually pull down the heat sink towards the bottom side. All right, next we're gonna actually run one more Time the cleaning on the CPU and GPU. Just make sure there's no dust. All right, next steps, we're gonna grab our liquid metal uh, thermal grizzly. And we are gonna apply one tiny drop over the CPU and one tiny drop over the GPU. That's a humongous drop right there. I'm just gonna suck back in a little bit. And you press down, it's kinda of... 
Why did I put too much on the GPU? There we go. Once you have a tiny drop, you're gonna grab a Q-tip and you're gonna start rubbing it. One little tiny drop goes a long way, so don't overdo. We're gonna grab whatever is left from here and we're gonna apply it on the top part in the middle part only. Same thing for the CPU, grab from here. I don't know if you guys can see it nicely in the video. So that's how I put it in there. And on here, if you want to go ahead, you can put some electrical tape, but or I'll suggest you guys to put a 3M tape, which are these ones I'm gonna put in the description. I cut these ones and I put it around it. But if you want to really precautious, go ahead do this one. I really recommend it. Just you're gonna cut a slice of this one and you're gonna apply on the green side only on every four side of the GPU because they do have some capacitors right over there here, so you don't want any of liquid metal getting over those. But if you put mm, a small amount, so you don't have to worry about it. All right next, before we put the heatsink on, you need to lift up the heatsink. In the upper position, so I'm gonna put some towel right underneath so I can lift up the middle side. So, this is what I did I put this kind of rolled up work towel right there, so I have this kind of elevation right here. I'm gonna grab the heatsink. Once you put the heatsink in place, do not move it, and you're gonna put the screws, put the two middle ones first. And then go ahead and put the rest. Now we're gonna just go ahead and put everything back together. Grab the bottom chassis, flip over the motherboard, put the where the USB ports are first. Stick those in first. Make sure they ha it has to go right in the plastic first. And it should, it should go down without any force. Once it's in the place, grab the fans. Put the fan in place. Put the screws for the fan. Alright, next you're gonna connect the fan cables, connect the front light, lift up the jack, push it underneath and just close it. The speakers, next you wanna grab the side USB and SD card reader. Same thing, lift up the jack. Slide down the cable. Alright, next we're gonna put the three screws for the motherboard. Oh, uh, I forgot one main essential thing. Just we have to unhook everything again. Maybe I can just do it this way. I'm gonna remove this. I forgot to put the power jack. I'm gonna see if I can slide it into the jack from here, which I should be able to. Yes, I can. And uh, with this screwdriver, just push it down. Okay, run the power jack cable. Put the bracket for the power jack cable.
Now again, put back the USB. I'm just gonna run the cable on the bottom side to make sure it's uh, in an okay position. So I don't wanna damage it. Because we're gonna be working on top here for a while. And we're gonna slide the top end where the heatsink goes. And we're gonna put the cable for the power on button and then we're gonna slide down the flex cable for the screen and make sure these two cables they have to go right over here to the other end from outside so they don't stay underneath so what I suggest you guys to do is a cool trick grab some tape and tape out these cables all the way back just like that. Alright, I got the keyboard and I got the on off switch button. You're gonna close it slowly. And you're gonna press down the corners to make sure you hear the click sound. This side, I do not. Now we can go ahead and close the screen and flip over the laptop. First thing I, I want to do, I want to put the cable for the screen. I'm just plugging the cable right there. It has a push down cable. Run the Wi Fi cable, the webcam cable, the cable. Right, we're gonna put the bottom screws. Remember, there's, there's two big ones, two longer ones. These are the 2.5 times 8, which goes right there, and the other one goes right over times 8, right over there. And go ahead and put the rest. Alright, it should be on. We're gonna put the last two screws on the top side. Now we're gonna remove this cable. There you go. So we're gonna plug in the cables for the touchpad. And the backlight lid. There's two clips right here and one on each side. I don't know if you guys can see this one here. This clip is already broken. So there's a plastic that is off because somebody else opened this laptop. And I have no idea why they did this. That's why it has a sticker right on the bottom cover with the profile name. Anyway, so we're gonna put the Wi Fi board. Before we put the board on, I'm going to plug in the cables. It's easier this way when you plug it before you put it. Slide it down in 45 degree angle and push it there. And put the lock right on over. Also put the lock for the LCD screen. Put the CMOS battery right there. 
plug it in. Next, we're gonna put the top cover for the heat sink. All you have to do is slide it in. Just like that. I'm gonna put the screws. All right, next we're gonna grab the ram. Put the ram in place. Make sure ram has a cut in the middle. The cut has to match the cut right there. Otherwise you will not go in 45 degree angle. Push it in and push down. Same thing with the SSD hard drive. 45 degree push in. Push down and put the screw. Also, there's a missing screw right over here. There's supposed to be a flat screw which is missing. So, you do have to remove this flat screw right there. So, you're gonna put the battery in, put the bottom side of the battery down. This side, and put the three screws, four screws for the battery. Or as I mentioned, this one is missing one screw right there and one right under the battery. So once we have done all this, we're gonna grab the hard drive. We're gonna stick the adapter right in there. Flip it over, put it in place, and stick down the cable for the ribbon cable. Right there. Next, put the four screws on the hard drive. Alright, we are almost done. Last thing, we're gonna put the cable for the battery cable. Make sure the bottom cover, you put the front end of the laptop down first, slide it underneath. And then push down the sides, and then last thing, put the top screw, just like that. Alright guys, I hope you guys really liked this video. If you liked it, please click that thumbs up button, and if you guys subscribe, it really helps out and motivates me to make more videos and take questions if you guys have. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys on my next video.